All right, so we're recording now. Um, welcome to Introductory Cryptography. Um, sorry about not being able to do this on Sunday. Uh, this won't happen again. This is a one-time thing. Uh, all our other meetings are going to be from 10 to 11 on Sunday. So uh, getting past that, uh, cryptography, it's really a division of three things. So cryptology, cryptography, and cryptanalysis. And when we're talking about like in the context in the context of Science Olympiad, um, cryptography and cryptanalysis are really gonna be the two main branches that we're going to focus on. And I'll get into definitions a little bit later. It's gonna be a, one of the slides later on. So just a little bit about me. Uh, my name's William. Uh, I'm a junior. I go to Mason High School in Ohio, if you've ever heard of it. I've been doing Science Olympiad for three years. so. I started in high school, I actually didn't know what it was in middle school because my middle school didn't have it. But luckily I, find, I found out about it in high school. And as of right now, I do a couple of different events. Uh, this is like kind of in the order of my favorites. I do Code Busters, Chem Lab, Sounds of Music, Experimental Design, and Ping Pong Parachute. And my email's right there if you guys ever need to contact me uh, if you have any questions or just want to ask anything. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and that picture, uh, that's like a little bit of a fun fact about me. Obviously, it's not a recent picture, but I'm wearing a Dodgers shirt, I think. I can't really see it, but I'm wearing a Dodgers shirt. And that's because I'm a really big Dodgers fan. I have been for a while, so I was pretty happy when they won the World Series last year. All right, so... I'm sure you guys know all of this stuff already. I just wanted to make sure that we could be on the same page before we get too far. Um, so if you ever need to ask a question, once again, especially for this week, please don't unmute yourself or uh, like show your face because we don't want to record you by accident. So if you can just raise your hand or type in the chat and then I'll just like say your question out loud so everybody can hear. And um, this is kind of important for cryptography. Uh, whenever we wanna write on our screens, there's the annotation option. So if you go to view options, uh, at the top or the bottom, it I think it depends on what kind of device you're on, but you can uh, hit annotate and then you can write on your screen and that's gonna help when we start to decode stuff. And also I think that I can share one whiteboard between all of us. So that would also help if we ever wanted to do group work. Okay, so right now, uh, obviously you guys can't click on this link because you don't have the slides. Uh, I'll send out the slides later, but if you can go to Google Classroom and put in this code, uh, sorry. So if you can put in that code right now, um, it'll give you access to this class. And right now, what I have uploaded there is this presentation, uh, a resource page with a bunch of links on good websites to study and just different fun practice resources. And I'll also post, I, I guess you could call them homework assignments, but yeah, I'll post like classwork and stuff on the Google Classroom. Uh, I'm gonna stay on this slide until you guys are ready to move on. Just let me know in the chat once you've joined. All right, thanks guys. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, there's three branches of cryptography. And since this is introductory cryptography, we're not gonna get too far you know, deep into like what makes up the things. But the basic concept is that cryptology is how this, how this study started. So it's people writing codes. It's people who had a message that they wanted to say, but there's this group of people that they don't want to hear the message. And specifically, they like want their friend or their ally to figure out what they want to say without anybody intercepting this message and decoding it. So that would be cryptology. You want to write 
and make up new kinds of encryptions. Cryptography is putting that into practice. So you can think of about it as like cryptography being the uh, experimental, I mean, not really experimental, but the real life version of cryptology. So if you think of studying chemistry, for example, that would be comparable to cryptology. So chemistry is to chemical engineering, for example, putting it to use in real life as cryptology is to cryptography. And cryptanalysis is not so overarching. It's a little bit more specific. Um, yeah, I don't think we have to get into it right now since keys we won't talk about for a little while. But if you're going to uh, come away with anything today, uh, please make sure you get down the difference between the plain text and the cipher text. So plain text, like I said before, uh, when I was talking about cryptology and cryptography, the plain text is the actual message that you want to say. So if I wanted to tell my friend that I'm free at four, can he come over? Obviously not during Corona, but some other time. If I wanted to tell him I'm free at four, can you come over? That's the plain text. The cipher text is what I send him after I've jumbled the letters around or after I've applied a formula to make the words that were once readable unreadable. It just becomes gibberish and the average person would not be able to find out what it is. So that's the difference between those two words. Okay, um, for this class, this slide won't matter as much. I just included it because if you ever wanted to do Codebusters, which is the Science Olympiad event for cryptography, um, you're going to need to do math with either a four or a five function calculator. Um, <clears throat> what that means is that you're only going to have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and maybe an exponent, like that would be the fifth, fifth function. But otherwise you're not allowed to have anything else on your calculator. It's actually kind of hard to find those calculators. The only place you could get them is at like the dollar store or like Walmart. But once you have one, you're, you're all set. And also, uh, this says a team is made up of three people. That's true in Division C. So for high school, you would have two teammates, uh, you know, other than yourself. But in Division B, since Codebusters is probably rotating in next year, I know that they're running the trial event right now as two people. So like one person and their partner. <clears throat> okay, so today's, sorry, I'm gonna mute myself. And... Okay, so mainly what we're gonna do today is we're going to get a very basic understanding of aristocrats, which is kind of like the gateway into the other ciphers. And then we're just gonna see like, just the definitions of the other ciphers. We're not gonna learn how to encode or decode anything. We're just gonna see what they're about. So I, I think I ordered the slides wrong here, but we're gonna talk about aristocrats. Yeah, so there's this big umbrella term. Uh, they're, they're called monosubs for monoalphabetic substitution. And there's multiple kinds of ciphers that encapsulate what a monosub is. But it basically means, uh, if I go back a couple of slides, here, like I said, my example is hello there. A monosub means that you have one specific letter that you're substituting for the real letter in the message. So for instance, in the ciphertext, you'll see that the A appears every time that an H should appear. And it's only when H's appear. An A can only map to an H and nothing else. That's basically what a monosub is about. Uh, another example would be, you see a B appearing every time that E should appear. So, you know, if you do that 26 times, because there's 26 letters, you're going to have an aristocrat. 
And what that means is that you have the spaces, like your sentence is the same. If your sentence has three words and the first word is five letters, the second word is four letters, the third word is five letters again, you're still going to see a five letter word, a four letter word, and a five letter word because the spaces are going to be in the same place. Uh, you're not gonna mess with the spaces at all. The only thing you're going to do is substitute one letter for a letter. So like I said before, the A could replace every H. Uh, one key thing to remember is that you can't replace a letter with itself because that would be a pretty weak way to you know, replace a letter if you're not actually doing anything. It's also good to just keep that in mind because uh, you don't want to make mistakes like that. So now that we have a little bit of an idea of the definition, um, these are basically our main three resources we're going to be using during the 11 weeks I think this class is running. So I'm just going to take us through uh, them all. So here, this cryptograms.org, it's basically like I was talking about aristocrats before. This is purely an aristocrat website. So if we look at this, uh, obviously, if we just read these letters at the bottom off, they make no sense, right? Because what we're looking at is the ciphertext. If I said to you, XJ, ABL, AKPL, O, like, obviously, I'm not making any sense. I'm not even speaking a different language because it just makes no sense. So we see at the bottom the ciphertext. And one cool thing about aristocrats uh, in Science Olympiad, for example, is that we get these numbers with them. And what that's signifying is how many times this letter appears in the entire quote. So, for example, there's a four under this A. So we know that we're going to see four A's in the entire quote, and we can just count to make sure there's one here, one here, one here, one here. So that's four. Um, yeah, so those are called letter frequencies. It's just telling you how many times in the quote the specific letter appears. And uh, like I said before, we can see that the spaces are preserved. So we can see that there's a two letter word, a three letter word, a four letter word, and a one letter word to start the thing. So yeah, like I mentioned, we're not changing anything about the spaces. We're just switching the letters around. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to solve any right now. If we go to this site, okay, so that was cryptograms.org. If you take an S off and go to cryptogram.org, this is like the official American Cryptogram Association. Uh, I'm not sure what they do actually, but they have a lot of good resources. So one second. If you go to solve a cipher, uh, it's actually kind of similar to cryptograms.org. Uh, like if you do this, you can see, once again, we have a bunch of nonsense written down. That's the cipher text. But if we like choose a random letter and we say it maps to some other letter, it'll instantly put all the I's in for J's, for example, like we just did. Uh, obviously, that looks not good because there's two I's together in the same word, and I don't think that's possible in English. But this can be a resource for you. Uh, if you just wanna copy and paste the ciphertext in because uh, I guess you don't have paper to work on or you just prefer doing it online, you can just copy and paste into this uh, or you can just like keep pressing new puzzle and you'll just have more practice. Uh, but in my opinion, I'd recommend cryptograms.org. It's just a little bit faster to practice on. Um, also, all right, not that resource, but if we go to Quip Quip, here, this is where you go only if you're super stuck. 
uh, I'll, I'll have all of these on the Google Classroom, by the way. And I'll just repeat uh, the Google Classroom details so everybody can join. But this is where you go if you're super stuck. Uh, the website automatically loads with the ciphertext. And it's just a random aristocrat. It's always going to be an aristocrat form. But you can just tell it to solve, and then it'll solve it for you. So really only go here if you've tried for like 10 minutes and can't figure something out. But it's there for you to see. OK, and lastly, we have Tobes. Uh, the person who made this website is the Division C National Director. So they write tests for the national tournament. They wrote tests for uh, North Carolina regionals and states because they're from North Carolina. But they made this pretty cool website. Um, the URL is up here. But if you go to test manager, uh, obviously you guys can see that I have imported a lot of tests. But whenever I give you guys a homework assignment, it's going to be in the form of a JSON file. So like in the same way that a PDF file says .pdf at the end, JSON file is going to say .json. Uh, what you're going to want to do whenever I give something like that is, oh, sorry, did somebody ask a question? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I'll go back here. Let, <laughs> let me know when you've joined. Here, actually, I'll just type it in chat just in case uh, other people need it in the future. All right, uh, gonna go back. All right, so we were on Tobes. So here, like I was saying before, you're going to have a .json file. Um, you want to go to import test from file at the bottom. So if I just backtrack for a second, this is the main page you're going to land on. You want to go to test manager and then go down to import tests. Uh, if you really want to, you can make a practice test for yourself. That's new test. But you want to go import test from file. And then you can like select a JSON. Okay, that's not working, but I have xenocrypts2.json. You can only import JSONs. Uh, that's the only type of file that this site is going to recognize. Uh, if you open the JSON by itself, it's not going to look like anything to you. Actually, you're going to see the answers, so you wouldn't want to do that. But if you import, it'll automatically take you to the test. And if you go to test packet, for example, you'd see how it would look like if you printed it out. Uh, there's a pretty cool feature if you go to interactive tests, uh, which I will probably use in a future class. Uh, you can take tests online, basically. It's really similar to Scilympiad, if you guys have done that this season yet. Uh, it's just a little bit more user-friendly and more specific for code busters and not just other events. So yeah, that's a pretty important resource that we'll use throughout the class. All right, um, I think we can just go on to aristocrats and then I'll just show another cryptograms.org example after we get a little bit more comfortable with aristocrats. So just a quick refresher, you're just substituting one letter for another letter and you do that 
26 times or even less if you don't use all the letters in the alphabet in your puzzle and you have the ciphertext from the point text. So this is what it would look like on a paper test. So, you know, fingers crossed that next season is normal. This is what you guys would see if you were interested in competing in CodeBusters. So you have the directions at the top, which tell you how many points that this specific question is worth. And one, I, I'd say unique, one pretty unique thing about CodeBusters is that it, it's counted very weirdly. So like you'll often see teams getting like 9,000 points on a test. And obviously you wouldn't find that in any other event, but the point weightage is you know pretty inflated. So this question, for example, is worth 300 by itself. Uh, sometimes there's a hint. Uh, you'll see that inside the directions. So in this case, we're given the author, Roy T. Bennett. Uh, I don't know who that is, but maybe you guys do. And in the middle, we have the ciphertext. Uh, at the bottom, when we looked at a cryptograms.org, we had numbers under each letter, but sadly that doesn't happen uh, for Codebusters. You get a frequency table instead. And basically this gives you the same information, right? It's just not in front of you the entire time unless you look at the bottom of the page. So for example, we have a 12 under Z. So that means each time that Z appears in the ciphertext, there are 12 or that's a bad wording. There are 12 Z's in the ciphertext. Okay. So a couple of strategies you can use when solving, uh, you know, just going really surface level is that uh, people have done studies over time and they found out which letters specifically are most common in just like regular English in what you would hear every day and what you would speak every day. And uh, different studies have different conclusions, but this is generally, uh, like, this is the trend that you'll see in all of them. It might not be the exact order from most common to least common, but it's pretty accurate. So in this is for English. The saying is Itawin Shirdalu. Obviously, it's not a word, but it's just saying that E is the most common letter in the English language. Uh, that's actually the most common by far. So all the studies agree on this. Then it's T, A, O, I, N. And then after that, the studies begin to disagree a little bit, but sure to is just kind of easy to say, and it should really help you. Um, yeah, so one thing we can notice is that we have E, A, O, I as four of the top five most frequent letters. So that means, for example, if I go back, we can see how like there's 10 S's, there's 11 T's and there's 12 Z's. Some of those have to be vowels because four of the five vowels are in the top five most common letters in the English language. So that's a really good assumption to make that some of those are vowels. Uh, obviously U is not super common. I think it's like 12th on this list, but you uh, you often won't have to guess you. Uh, going past frequency, there are certain words that look very distinguishable, I guess. Like there is no other word that would look like this word in terms of patterns. So when I say that that has an A, B, C, A pattern, what I'm trying to communicate is that the first and last letters are the same, right? Because they're both T's and there's four letters total and the middle letters don't match. So that's what I mean by ABCA. And one way you can kind of combine frequency analysis and word patterns is that if we go back to that list, we can see that T and A are two of the three most common. Like they will be a lot more common than other letters. And if we have T, H, A, T, we're going to have super common letter, not as common letter, super common letter, super common letter. 
So what that's going to look like is, uh, for example, that doesn't appear in this cipher. But for instance, if we said this was like D, P, K, D uh, in the second line, just ignore that it's actually a Y and pretend that it's a D. If D and K were super common, but P was not as common, then it's a very good guess to think that that word is that. And a lot of the time, we would automatically just guess that because uh, going past letter frequencies and going into word frequencies, that is a super common word. I think it's just a little bit below the in terms of frequency because it's really hard to make a sentence without either of the two. Um, I'm going to tack on another strategy. Uh, okay. Think, just think out loud in the chat. What are the only one letter words in the English language? Also, it's not a trick question, by the way. Yeah, good job. There's only A and I. Uh, obviously, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever read something like Shakespeare before, you might see like an O. Uh, usually like test writers will not be that mean to you. They'll only have A or I as a single letter. So if we use that knowledge to look at this slide, we can see right here in the middle that there's an N by itself. And from what we just said, we know that this N has to be either A or I. So we can go ahead and make sort of a guess. Uh, one second, can you guys see my annotations? Can you just like tell me yes or no in the chat? Like if I do this. All right, cool. Uh, let me erase that then. Okay, so, sorry, like I was saying before, it's got to be either A or I. Uh, without getting too complex, let's just look at the frequencies. So N, there's six of them. And we can see that there's a lot of letters that are way more common than having just six in this. Like we see that there's eight Ks, we see that there's 10 Ss, 11 Ts, 12 Zs, like there's a lot of letters that are more common than N in this instance. And if we go back to that list, it's e -ta -e -tawin, sorry. So it's E-T-A-O-I-N. And we're deciding between A and I right now. Of these, it's like a really, really good guess to think that N is actually I, because if you think about it, ETA, A is the third most common, and ET and A are really close in frequency to each other, actually. Uh, after them, like the percentage goes down kind of a lot, but if we talk like E-T-A-O-I-N, I is too far down the list to be considered super common. And if we look and we compare that to there being six N's in this quote, that's not super common because we just proved that there's four different letters that appear more often than it. So it's a pretty good assumption to say that N is I and not A. Okay, I'm not gonna fill them all in, but basically that's the kind of thinking that you would use when starting a quote, for example. Or you could go to contractions, uh, here, type in the chat again. What if you have one letter that comes after the apostrophe like this? What? Well, there's only two options. What what could that letter be? Actually, there's three. Sorry about that. 
Yeah, S is one of them. Good. Wait, uh, Ethan, are you talking about a different word? Oh, wait, sorry if I wasn't clear. I was asking, uh, what's, what are the only letters that could come after an apostrophe in a contraction? S is one of them. There are two more, if you guys want to take a guess. If you're stumped, I can also just go ahead. Yeah, T is one of them. Nice. The third one isn't as common. Like, you wouldn't hear it a lot. M? I, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. A M does work. Yeah. Sorry, that, that wasn't in my head. Uh, if you have a long word like this, though, not I, then here, I I'll just say it could be D, <laughs> not R. Yeah, random guess. Uh, the reason D could work, because if you had a word like they'd, that means like they would, right? You don't see it a lot because, you know, something that ends in a T like shouldn't or something that ends in an S like, why am I blinking? Like my mom's that ends in an S. That's a lot more common than saying like you'd or I'd, yeah. All right, so moving on, we have an example coming up. I think we should probably work together on it. Yeah, so here I just made everything a lot bigger so it's easier to see. Uh, you guys can make suggestions for me to do. Like based on based on the steps I outlined, outlined right here, uh, you, sh you should see some things that you recognize. And one helpful thing to do is like, as soon as you get a problem, you go down to the frequency table at the bottom and you just find out, okay, which letters are the most frequent. I'm gonna like circle those or make a note of those. And then I'm going to look at the actual quote. Hmm, I probably should have put a one letter word in here somewhere. <laughs> Okay, O is E. Hmm. That's actually a pretty good guess because it's really common this time. But here, I'll just show, this is one of the first things I had to learn when I was learning too. I'll, I'll show why it's maybe not right. Uh, annotate. Okay, so the first thing I would look at, if O is E, we have this, right? We have a three letter word that comes after a comma that starts with E. And if we try to think about three letter words in English. Oh, yeah, that's a really good guess. The word is and. Um, I, at least I think. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm misleading you. It's not and. But that's a really good guess. When a three letter word comes after a comma, it, it almost always is and. Uh, but yeah, that's the reason it can't be an E is because I think besides like ear or like eat, I can't think of a three letter word that starts with E. Yeah, but's also a really good guess. Uh, one way that you could confirm if the word was but, uh, B is a really uncommon letter, right? And T, uh, like we saw, is a pretty common letter. It's second place. So if the third letter, like, uh, let's just say that the word that I circled is but, uh, just ignore all the frequencies at the bottom. Uh, we could confirm that by seeing that Q is super uncommon and T K is super common. And that would, you know, kind of reassure us that it's but. Okay. Uh, Julie, which word are you saying is but? I mean, the, sorry. 
O T H. Yeah, it is. Nice job. Uh, what'd you go off of? It repeats. Oh, that's a nice thing to point out. All right, yeah. So, okay, I'm just gonna go back a slide again. Like I said here, word frequencies, the most common word in English is the. So if you see a three letter word repeating a lot, that's a really good assumption to make, that it's the. Okay, so I'll start filling stuff in. Hold on, let me make this easier. Uh, if you guys can do a little bit of imagination while I'm setting this up, is there anything else you can see in advance based on the fact that you know for sure that OTH is the... Oh yeah. Wait. Which part? Wait, which which part did you say was T O? Oh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, try to give me ideas of what this word could be. And this word, since it's the same word. Yeah, nice job. Uh, in English, if a two letter word starts with T, unless like the test writer is like really trolling you and they say TV, like television, it has to be two. So you can say that A is O. Yeah, that is a pretty good guess. But yeah, there are a couple of O something words. So when, when I'm like solving a quote, I usually like to leave a two letter word that starts with O alone, just because there's a couple of options like you have or of on. Okay, try looking at this word. Yeah, yeah, nice job. Uh, that's that's one of the things I was talking about in the past slide. Uh, if you have a four letter word that starts and ends with the same letter, and that letter is super common, like we see that is super common right here, then it's probably that. Uh, nice job. Uh, try this one too. I think you said it earlier as an idea. Oh yeah, I guess it is on, since it is and. Nice. Oh, and right now I'm just filling in what we have so far. I'm not doing like any extra work, by the way. You guys are doing all the work here. H Q Z O T. Oh yeah, nice guess. I hadn't even filled those in yet. Yeah. Uh, same thing with three letter words that start with E. There are really few options. Uh, for five letter words that start with E, it's really only earth and early. I, I don't think I can think of another one.
Uh, let me know if there's a letter that I skipped and I'm not filling in. I don't want to put you guys at a disadvantage for just missing stuff. Yeah, nice. Oh yeah, I wasn't filling in R's. Truth, yeah. Jeez, you're on a roll. Yeah, died. Uh, this is kind of a sad quote, I guess. Yeah, that doesn't happen super often, but sometimes uh, quotes can start with but. I'm yeah, this has to be but. Um and right now we have a lot of stuff filled in. So usually when I get to like this stage in solving something, one thing I like to do is just take a step back and try reading the sentence. Because a lot of the times you'll find you're like you'll you'll find yourself saying words that aren't there yet but make sense. You would have done gut. Yeah. I would have done like put or something if it wasn't, but yeah. There's actually kind of a lot. There's like cut, hut, but but makes sense here. Sorry about the handwriting too. Uh, next time I'm gonna try and set it up so all of us can write on the same one. Is there anything I'm missing? Okay, so just try try reading the first couple words, but the truth blank that he died blank blank. Yeah, the last word is withstand. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that does tell us what this word is. No, you're good. <laughs> you're telling me a lot of useful stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah, nice one. It is enemy. Um, I guess I'll, I'll stop for a little bit to talk about five letter words that have the first and the third letters the same and everything else different. So there's like every, uh, yeah, there's every, uh, you'll see this a lot actually. Yeah, it is known. Uh, there's a lot of different words that are variations on every. So there's everybody, everything, everyone. But if you see these first and third letters, the same and they're super common then usually it's every sometimes it's enemy and the reason you can tell that it's enemy is because the second letter is going to be really common because n is a common letter but v is nowhere near a common letter right because not many words have v in them few uh can you tell me what line few is in sorry i wasn't looking Oh, and this is right. Nice. Uh, no, I think few is right. Yeah. Fit to withstand. Yeah, nice. And 
are you? And you said this. Nice. Okay, so we have this word, this word, and this word left. I probably haven't filled some stuff in. So I'm missing B, J, yeah, only, nice. Oh, I could have filled in the J and that would have helped, but it is only. So we got a B here, we got a B here. So this turned out to be solitude, and now we're just missing this word. Do we have either R or Y? We should have R. Yeah, M. So, simplest, yeah, nice job. So just to check, if we read it out loud at the end, it should make sense. So, but the truth was that he died from solitude, the, en the enemy known to but few on this earth and whom only the simplest of us are fit to withstand. Okay, nice job. That was actually like really fast for a first solve. Yeah, it is deep. I didn't realize that I put such a deep quote on this PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, um, I think for today, we're gonna do one more solve together. And then next time we can go a little bit deeper onto more specific strategies on how to do aristocrats. Oh, no. It's it's because it's your first time. You're doing actually really great. You made a lot of good suggestions. Okay, it says now try it out yourself, but I I'm still going to write for you guys because I want to make sure I don't mess up the whiteboard thing. Tell me if you see anything. I mean, everybody made a bunch of good suggestions. I mean, there's only three of you here right now, but I saw all of your names a lot. This one's actually a little bit harder. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to give anything away, but if you can try looking at this word, because this is a word pattern that appears a lot. I don't know if it's easy to get without like seeing it a bunch though. So if you can't get it, don't worry. I also might just give you guys a hint. Uh, because we had to reschedule this one, we do have to end a little bit early just so the class after us can start on time. So I'm probably gonna end at like 4.57, but uh, next class I was just trying to add like three minutes to make up for it. Um, okay. So if we look, the common letters are K, S, and something's blocking my screen so I can't see, but maybe something else. I'm just going to give you guys a huge hint. This is there. If you have a five letter word that has the third and the fifth the same, and the th uh, third and the fifth letters are super common, then it's probably there because E is the most common letter like we learned about. And a uh, T is also the second most common letter. So you want to check that the first letter, uh, the first letter is common too. So I'm going to try filling stuff in and uh, keep doing what you were doing. Just try to give me some suggestions. Yeah, nice. So if you have there, you need to have a verb after it, right? I mean, that's a little bit more advanced thinking, but if you have there, you'll probably have either is or are and in this case, we have a two letter word after, so it has to be is.
Hmm. I, I think that's a pretty good guess. The only reason I wouldn't put that yet is because I something can be a lot of words because there's like if, in, is, it. Like there's just a lot of words it could be. Obviously, it can only be if or in here. Uh, yeah. So we're just going in between two different words for that right now. There, yeah, nice. Uh, n nice guess. <laughs> eater, that's a word, but it, it's not eater. <laughs> it, it is a pretty good guess, though. It, it's a word that's really similar to eater. Yeah, enter, nice. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, think about what this letter could be. Yeah, not, so this ends up being O. Oh, I just filled in something wrong. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I don't know if I have to enable anything, but if you have the option, go ahead. Royalness? Uh, here, I'll help you out there. It's not royalness. Oh. Here, we actually don't have too much time, so I'm just going to try and solve this, and you guys can see. Uh, where would is be? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to try and solve this. Not enter this country. Sorry, I, I know this probably doesn't make sense right now. I'm just trying. Oop. Okay, never mind, guys. See you.